Hello everyone, my name is Christian and I will talk now about the L5 Kit Framework. This is the agenda for this part of the tutorial. In this section you are going to learn what is L5 Kit, where you can find its repository and documentation, what you can do with it, and then at the end we will talk a little about the license we use for L5 Kit. So what is L5 Kit? L5 Kit is a PyTorch centric open source framework. It was created to accelerate research and development in industry and academia. One of its main goals is to democratize data, code and algorithms. Nowadays, it supports all lift open source datasets and it is the framework that will be used for the rest of this tutorial. Where you can find our 5 kit our 5 kit is hosted on GitHub. So you can just go to github.com slash lift slash l 5 kit and you will find the open source code for our project together with tutorials and now the Jupyter notebooks that will be shown during the course of this tutorial. You can also find a comprehensive documentation at the website l5kit.org. I will talk now about some advantages of using L5Kit. In L5Kit you will find PyTorch compatible implementation of datasets to load semantic maps. So you don't have to create wrappers or roll your own implementation to be able to load and parse datasets. We also have a very fast rasterization engine that can be used to go from the semantic map to a rasterized image that can be directly used to train machine learning models. L5Kit also comes out of the box with some deep neural network based lines that can be reused or adapted to your own needs. We also have in L5Kit a high quality vectorial scene visualization that is interactive and where you can script the scene, inspect agents or zoom in and zoom out. You will also find implementation for open loop and closed loop metrics that can be used to evaluate your own models, such as collisions, displacement errors, among other metrics. There are two ways on how to use L5Kit in your project. The first one is to use it as a library on your project. So all you have to do is to import L5Kit and use its API directly on your code. The second way is to use Jupyter Notebooks. We already provide notebook implementation of some baselines where you can use and adapt according to your needs or you can just use the notebooks to inspect scenes and use our interactive visualization engine. We also implemented some Jupyter notebook baselines in L5Kit showing you how to load and visualize data, how to do prediction, planning and simulation. Those notebooks are the ones that will be used during the rest of this tutorial. I will now show an example of actual code using L5Kit to create a PyTorch dataset and load the data. The first thing you have to do is to import some components that do do the work for you. The first step into that is to load the data from the disk. This is done using chunk dataset by specifying a dataset path to it and calling the open method. That will create the SAR dataset, which will be responsible to load from data from disk and to the memory when is needed. The second step is to build a rasterizer by specifying some raster configuration that can be pixel size or the raster size. And then the last step is to instantiate what is called the ego dataset, which is an egocentric dataset. You created this dataset by passing by your rasterizer that you created, the ZAR dataset and some configuration. After that, you will have your training dataset, which is just like any other regular PyTorch dataset that you can use to index your data and also to sample data to train your machine learning models. You can also visualize data using our visualization API. For that purpose here I will be using the draw trajectory API. In that case I'm indexing one particular frame of the dataset, of the ego dataset that we just created and then I'm calling the draw trajectory with the image that I acquired from that sample here and also some parameterization configs. And in the next slide I will show you how this output looks like. In this slide I'm showing here how the output of the previous function that we used looks like. We can see here in that image that you have the ego, agents from the scene and also the ground truth trajectory that's drawn here in pink. We also have the lanes that are drawn from the semantic map. One thing that is important to note here is that you can configure the pixel size and the raster size of this rendering engine. By changing a single parameter in the configuration, you can render a high quality aerial map 
from the semantic map using satellite imagery. It can be used as another extra channel in your policy network, meaning that you can add extra information to your network. It's also interesting to note that here we also have the same oriented box rendering as in semantic map that I showed in the previous slide. In L5Kit, you can also render high quality interactive vectorial visualizations, as you can see here in the image in the left. It is very easy to scrub the scene frames using the slide here at the bottom. You can also see that all states are clearly represented. An example of that are the traffic lights that are represented by the orange color in the lanes. You can also have this visualization interactive in Jupyter Notebook or export it to embed on any HTML file. You can find more information about the L5Kit in our documentation website at l5kit.org. In this website, you will be able to find introductory materials tutorials, and API reference documentation. L5Kit also uses a permissive license called Apache License 2.0. The Apache license is an OSI-approved license. With it, you are allowed to have commercial usage, modify, distribute, and have patent and private users as well. Thank you for watching this section of the tutorial. You can show your support to L5Kit by going into github.com slash lift slash L5Kit and starting your project or contributing to it with issues, code or documentation. Next, Ray is going to tell you about perception system in the autonomous vehicle stack.